Hi, Christoph. Welcome to the fifth edition of the Data Innovation Summit. We're glad to have you with us today. To start with, please tell us a bit more about yourself and Helio AG. Yeah, hi, Ivana. Thank you so much for having me. It's uh, lovely to be here. And um, yeah, I, I, of course, uh, can tell you a little bit about myself first. My name is Christoph. I am a co-founder and CTO of Helio. As for, for my personal life, I've been uh, working as been a software engineer for around 15 years, I would say. And in these 15 years, most of the time I spent working in, uh, on, in online, for, working for online services, doing mm -hmm. architecture, engineering, and um, customer, also uh, working together closely with customers, building distributed systems, big data systems, and also some, some blockchain applications. Mm -hmm. And in these 15 years, I, I also have learned, I mean, I have used the cloud from very early days and I have always found the cloud very fascinating, mainly for one reason, because uh, the cloud solves a problem that, or solves many problems, but mm -hmm. one of the main problems that I always saw was that data centers are terribly utilized. So there's a lot of services idling around, just standing there yeah. doing nothing most of the day. And I was fascinated by how the cloud solves that. Now we are 10 years in the, in the age of cloud and I still see that a lot of data centers still cannot benefit from this, from this benefit that the cloud brings, that the utilization goes up. And therefore I, I set out, I, I set together with a close friend of mine from back then, uh, Kevin, uh, who has who was a, uh, an outstanding expertise in data center and also networking. And mm -hmm. we talked about that. And then he agreed that there is a huge opportunity there to increase the sustainability of traditional data centers by applying cloud cloud principles to these data centers namely that we can make we take the resources that are standing around in any data center out there and and we attach it to to the helio network and then we we helio basically is a platform that um, offers these resources to uh, to engineers that want to to software engineers that want to want to deploy applications and therefore, we, we drastically increase basically the sustainability mm -hmm. of these traditional data centers, same way as the, as the clouds do. And yeah, so we mm -hmm. found that uh, Helio, Helio uh, has been around for one and a half years almost. And uh, we're based in Switzerland, a very young startup. Now we are uh, eight people working on it yeah. full, almost full time. And uh, yeah. Okay, uh, that's great. Uh, but talking about the, you know, uh, footprint, the AI foot, foot, footprint on the world. Uh, so training a single AI model can emit as much carbon as five cars in their lifetime. Um, let's talk about this uh, statement a bit because I'm not sure our viewers are familiar with it. Uh, what's the correla correlation between AI and cars in terms of environmental impact? Yeah, so uh, I mean, if you if you think about how compute any compute problem basically, but AI impacts the environment, there is two main aspects that you have to have to consider. Mm -hmm. One is of course that when when hardware and also data centers are being built, there is a lot of in the supply chain of a server. You can imagine there needs all this metal, needs the silicon, needs to be uh, needs to be uh, dug up and then uh, transformed into at the end the server. Also, there needs to be concrete to build the data yeah. centers and everything. So until and this is of course the big chunk of of, uh, fo of the footprint so uh, there's a lot of uh, carbon emitted even before the very first computation is being done on, on a hardware and the second um the, the second main pillar of of the the emissions that uh, ai and everything causes is the the source of the electricity that we are using so mm -hmm. of course it's a difference when we when we use electricity that was produced by burning coal of course there's a lot Definitely. of co2 emissions involved but when we when we power the service by the by solar energy then there is much less uh, carbon mm -hmm emissions and and uh, i think the most for the second pillar the most important thing to understand is that this is not a constant so it's not like there is this data center and this data center has this constant supply of the, this green energy because the quality i call it but or or, or the greenness of, mm -hmm. of electricity for every data center for every server literally um varies over the day and also over the year of course in the mm -hmm. in winter when the when there is less sun and, and everything then of course the 
and also people use more electricity to heat their homes. Of course, there is generally the greatest dirtier in terms of carbon emissions than in summer. And during the day, of course, it's also cleaner because of solar power and these problems that the, that the, or problems, these challenges that the renewable energy sources also um, pose upon us, they, they need to be solved and we can only solve them by making data centers a a part of the of the bigger ecosystem they live in and, and right. this this therefore we need to respect the circumstances of the electricity grid mm -hmm. thank you for the insightful answer that was good to hear uh, but uh, let's talk about the presentation you delivered at the data innovation summit together with the burger ober on the topic of how to build ai models that don't hurt mother earth one ai model at a time uh, so in the rush uh, for AI adoption and ROI, as we know, especially in the AI industrialization era, it seems that the uh, environmental footprint and efficiency of AI comes second. Uh, what should data leaders uh, do in order to ensure they build environmentally friendly AI models? <laughs> Yeah, uh, thank you for yeah. this question. The first step, of course, is uh, it has already been taken by watching this uh, my presentation and this mm -hmm. interview because mm -hmm. the first step we need to do is we need to start caring about yeah this. being aware um, mm -hmm. exactly and 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 so just and and also as Berger uh, so he explicitly said it in the presentation that there is remedy we can do something about it. And therefore, if we start caring, we start talking to the right people and we start guess, get the ball rolling, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there is, there's a lot of great work already being done on the, on, I, I would say on the lower level, on the infrastructure level, there is people working on water cooling, which uh, increases the efficiency for, for cooling generally, but also mm -hmm. makes it possible to, to use the heat that comes out of a data center for something else, for example, heating homes. Mm -hmm. There is uh, people uh, b building hardware, like for example, uh, Google's TensorFlow TPUs. They use much less electricity by getting the same amount of work done. This is a very important step. There is uh, a lot of load balancing, heat balancing inside data centers. So on the infrastructure level, there is a lot of work that is that is going on and, and um, a lot of people working on this. And, I mean, the, the, the potential gains that we get from that, they are huge because if you imagine that when, when a data center runs with, on, on carbon-free electricity and we also use the heat that gets out of the data center for something that would have used heat anyways, for example, right. heating homes, they, they need the heating anyways or hot water for, for showering sure. or whatever, mm -hmm. then if you if you factor all of that in then the operation of a data center can actually be even not only carbon neutral but even carbon positive because we get heat out of the data center that otherwise would have been produced by some some carbon emission uh, mm -hmm. carbon emitting means and this is really something this is an amazing promise right mm -hmm. and there but but they, we need to we need to change the way that we think about infrastructure also from from the user side and this is exactly what what helio is here for we we are providing this this layer in between so that the, the because using this infrastructure in a in a sustainable way means taking care of you have to know when there is green electricity you have to know which data center has the proper hardware and which data center has demand for the heat that gets out of the data center and all of that and that shouldn't be as a, as a data scientist, you shouldn't care about this this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly why why we we built Helio as a platform in between those sustainable data centers and the data scientists and and other users of of compute infrastructure, so that we take care of making this infrastructure actually really sustainable. Yeah. And, and Berger builds these uh, these amazing data centers that really can be carbon positive at some point in the future. Even. Mm -hmm. It sounds really amazing what you're doing. Um, you. so, but also in your presentation, you talked about a data center in your door, Stockholm, powered by uh, an SDA member. Could you tell us a bit more about this data center, please? Yeah, of course. So um, 
I, I already mentioned it really introductory before the, mm -hmm. the, the main th thing that we saw on this journey, as I said, maybe two and a half years ago, roughly Kevin and I sat together and, and we said, we decided we want to do something about the sustainability of data centers. And then we started looking into all the different aspects that this has, uh, talking to the electricity grid, uh, then talking to the electricity, the utility, like the provider, yeah. talking to people who would buy heat even that that's actually surprisingly difficult to find people that would get the heat out of mm -hmm. a, out of a data center talking to people that can do water cooling because with lukewarm air you can actually do nothing really sensible yeah. and so long story short the point is that this is a very uh, complex and rich ecosystem with a lot of players involved and a lot of also policy making and and, and stuff and there we we figured okay this is not a startup this is not a task that the startup can solve, right? And that's why we co-founded the, the Sustainable Digital Infrastructure Alliance, SDIA, as a means of getting the story out there, talking to the right people. And in parallel, Helio can, can um, build this, this platform for, for the end users make, making use of this data center. And therefore, uh, we found one partner that then was, was ready to, to try to build or not to try to we build a proof of concept kind of data center so it's rather small um, and uh, this data center will be located in uh, yeah Jordbury. Uh, there we will we will use carbon free electricity only so there is no really no uh, carbon involved in, in burn in producing the electricity we will reuse the heat for district heating mm -hmm. so actually heating homes we will take care of uh, that the, the load management inside the data center, so when which task is being executed on which server and everything, they take into account the, the, the availability of electricity. So if there is more green electricity, then we compute sure. more, basically. Mm -hmm. So this is really a proof of concept of all of these players working together. And, and uh, there is, like the data center is built, it is, it is ready, it's up and running. And okay. uh, we, have the, we have the hardware in there, we have the load balancing and everything. And so now we are ready to talk to users that want to use this data center. So if you would like your AI model to be trained in a carbon positive way, then uh, you should definitely talk to us. Yeah, it uh, sounds uh, really amazing and promising. So I'm sure that a lot of people would like to cooperate. Uh, but yeah. one last, yeah. <laughs> Feel free, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Uh, and lastly, uh, one last question. Uh, what do you predict for the future? Uh, will we have more efficient, environmentally friendly AI by reducing the required computational power and carb carbon emission for that matter? I, I'm absolutely sure about that because there is so many great minds and, and brilliant people working on this. And uh, yeah, so I, I think there, I mean, the, the, the need for compute, no matter what we do, will increase anyways. And mm -hmm. therefore we start, we start being, we have to start being a little bit more responsible about, first of all, what what problems to solve with compute and what not to, because uh, they, they hurt more than they do good, right? And, yeah. and people are working on that, definitely. And they, they start seeing it, they start caring. And therefore I am absolutely convinced that this is going to happen. And uh, yeah, that's also the reason why, uh, why I and Ke Kevin and me founded uh, Helio. Yeah, you're involved in, the, in that. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, great to hear and hopefully uh, it will come true. Well, uh, Christoph, thank you for uh, being part with us, uh, be being part with the uh, Data Innovation Summit and for doing this interview with me. Ivana, thank you very much for having me.